Okay, so I'm really excited for um, everyone to be on because it's our first call of the year, which is kind of exciting. I was thinking we had another one, but I forgot it was like our end of the year one where we all drink wine and stuff, which is really cool. Um, it all just blended together. But I just have a couple things like, um, sorry, I'm like losing hair everywhere. Um, just like reminders and some dates and things like that. And then, and kind of touching on some things that Micah talks about in her team call. So if you watch that, it might be repetitive, but she has all the dates that we need to talk about anyways. And then I have a couple just like tips and pointers and things on how we can kind of get started off on the right foot this year. And then I'll open it up to you if you guys have any questions and then we'll be done. So if you have your calendars or notes or whatever, you can make sure that you have all of these, these things in there. Um, but as far as for our the rest of our month goes for January, so new coaches, some of this might seem like, oh my gosh, this is a lot, but just kind of like taking the dates, don't worry about it, and I'll sit and work with you on that, and we'll try to figure out, you know, when you're going to kind of get started with different things. But so next week, remember, is our sneak peek event, our, our backstage pass, and that's going to be on Thursday, the 21st. So if you have people who are interested in different things or possibly interested in coaching, that kind of thing, be um, kind of, I would start holding off and adding them to the last sneak peek just, I mean, because it's ending and we're going to have this new one. You want to have some new people in the newer group. So just let them know, Hey, that's awesome. You know, I have a, I have an open house that I'm hosting with my team and it's on Thursday. Can I add you to that one? And so I would definitely start sharing about that by Monday of next week. So the 18th, start sharing about that. You could do a post to share on the 18th and then maybe on the next day do an event where you actually don't just invite anybody, but that's an easy way to kind of target some different people who you A, think are good, might be a good coach or B, might, you might have been talking to them a little bit before and you think that they might be interested. So and you can just easily send them an invite and they can RSVP to the event, which makes it nice. So another thing about next week, I will be gone at the, the new leader conference from Wednesday night to Sunday night. So I might be, I mean, I'll still be in touch, but if I don't answer back as quickly as I normally do, that's why. So I'll have some of our other diamond leaders kind of helping with different things and making sure that you guys are all good to go if you have questions. Um, so they can kind of help you out a little bit there, but I will be, it will be in Los Angeles. <laughs> so quite a far trek with the little ones. So I'm a little nervous about that, but um, pretty cool that we get together. So I'm hoping to bring back a lot of like good nuggets of things to tell you guys when I come back. So I'm excited about that. Um, other dates for our week by the end of the month, you know, by the last, we have the last full week starts on the 25th, kind of be thinking about what you want to do for next month, inviting people to your next little challenge inside of your fit club or however you're running your groups. If you do challenge groups or that, I'm going to be focusing on doing something like, and I'll put our calendar out obviously next week, but um, I'm going to be focusing on some kind of like love your body type challenge. Probably not called that because I think probably the tone up one is called love your body. So something else, I think last year there was like a love handle challenge is what somebody did. There was a, um, oh gosh, what were some of the other names? Anything, anything that's like Valentine's y, like romantically lovey related, you know, and they did some couples, um, what's it called? Some couples groups, like husbands and wives got all the husbands and wives in on a group together, which was really fun. So like Diana's not watch. I don't know if she's on yet, but like her husband and her could do that. And um, Michelle and Jacob, and I forget who else is kind of doing this with their husband at the moment, but that's a really fun thing to do too. So by the end of the month, kind of be thinking about what you want to do um, as far as a, a new group to goes for February. That's going to be something really, really fun. Okay, a couple things about Micah's team. So you guys know that Inspiration is like our big top team, our, our um, what's the word, our upline team. And so they, um, she's doing a thing in her team and it goes all the way down to us where it's the success club um drawing and so she's doing like really huge <laughs> prizes and stuff like this month you can choose from either a weight bench or the um adjustable bow flex dumbbells which is really awesome and so all you have to do to be able to get into the drawing is to hit success club you hit success club five and you get your name in there once success club 10 you get your name in there twice so just kind of a fun incentive to be to be doing that so I know sometimes we think like oh well I'm never going to get it because everybody hits success club and that's like not true like we 
are not, it's not the norm for everybody to hit success club. It's definitely something that you want to do in your business that we're going to talk about in a second, but you know, there's a lot of people who don't make that a priority. So if you do, then you have a possibility of maybe that being you. So, um, okay. Back to the backstage pass really quickly that we're hosting next week. We've been doing the same videos over the last, the last two times that we've hosted. If there is anybody who wants to do a video or wants to be added in and kind of like show their face to the, to the team, to the backstage pass or whatever, then let me know, message me aside right now or jot it down and send me a little message later on tonight or this week and let me know so that you can make a video on something that you feel really confident in um, to be able to share with people, you know, whether it's, team culture, or if you feel really, really um, successful in success club or in, you know, talking about what is a challenge group, you know, anything like that, those are all good things. So if you have something that you want to kind of get better at sharing about, then I encourage you to, to reach out and make a video and then we'll add it to the, to the list of things that we post on Thursday. Okay. Um, those of you who are pushing for that elite training, this is mostly for girls who are pushing for diamond that starts on the 18th. Um, any of you who are not going to be in that, that's the one that Micah has been talking about with literally like all their, they've all been top coaches before Melanie Mitro, the number one coach in the business is in that training and she's leading it or it's so cool. We're like legit getting to like talk to them. Like Lindsay Matt was like commenting back on our stuff and I'm like, Ah, like total fangirl. So um, I will definitely be sharing lots of nuggets of exciting information with you. They've already given us so many different documents and things that are going to really help you to kind of streamline what to do each day, like a task list and, um, you know, what to do as a new coach. And then as you go up into the different ladders of, of what kind of coach you are. So I'll be sharing that really soon, um, but just lots of good leadership things. So be expecting lots of videos and, and tips and things coming your way if you're not in that training. Um, okay, what else? I keep forgetting everything that I wanted to share. Does anyone have questions about any of that yet? No, that's pretty much it as far as like dates and stuff go. Cause we'll have one more team call on the 27th. So not next week, but the Wednesday after that. And that'll be kind of closing out January, talking about what our February game plan is and, and going from there. So now I kind of wanted to shift gears into kind of just some tips on things that you should be doing to be successful. So I have now been doing this for, 14, almost 15 months now. So I've kind of gone through every single season that there is in the beach body world. And I was just talking to some of our coaches and they're probably on here now, but it really is like a roller coaster. So I want to see like a show of hands. How many of you literally feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster every day where it's like sometimes you're really super pumped and then the next day you're like, well, dang it, like nobody's interested, right? So that is like the hardest part about this business, but that is why personal development is so, so huge. And I'll be honest, I spent months when I first started coaching, not reading any personal development. Like, yes, I listened to some training videos and things like that. And I can tell you it completely changes your game, your game plan, your mindset, everything when you start doing personal development. And it doesn't have to be for long, like 10 minutes. So that's all you can devote in 10 minutes of something good, of a little bit of a book or of a podcast or anything, but something outside of just your normal training videos that we do in all of our different calls and Micah's calls or little videos that I post for you guys. That's all good. That's all training and stuff. But I mean like personal development, either learning how to be a better leader, learning how to just have that mindset change where you're focusing on your goals and on moving forward, learning how to go for no. That's one of the books that we read, go for no, how to not like take it so personally when people say no to you. And you know, that's just, we're human and we are built and we're women and we're built to be emotional. And so of course it's an emotional thing when someone's like, no, never mind. I don't want to sign up or they, you know, put you through the ringer and talk about everything with you. And you think that you're going to sign up and then all of a sudden they maybe go with a different coach or something like that. All of that stuff. It's okay to be emotional about that, but there's a difference between just being like, okay, that kind of sucks. <sighs> okay. I'm going to move on and really letting it get to you. So that is where personal development is huge. So we're at the beginning of the year. Some of you are brand new coaches. Some of you have been coaching for as long as I have. Some of you have been coaching for half a year, whatever it may be. I really, really encourage you to get a book and get 
a game plan to start your month off and your year off successfully. So um, Micah talked about some of these, but these are all ones, I've read almost all of these and they're all really, really good. The slide edge is the one that you should start with. If you are months into your coaching career and you have not read that yet, you need to go back to square one and read the slide edge. It's so good. Okay, it's really not very long. You can read it or you can listen to it on YouTube for free. Um, some other ones that are good, the Go Giver is a good one. Um, go for no. If you really struggle with inviting and with getting just really taking it to heart when people tell you no and just you just can't get over that hurdle, then you've got to read that. It's like literally this thin and you could read it in a day. I'm pretty sure it was Kim that read it on the treadmill or something one day, like in a full day. She's like, I just got it. I just read it. <laughs> so um, it's a really short read and a really, really lots of great um, things to learn in there. Um, I am that girl. I am about to start that one. I personally have not read it yet, but that's awesome. I know, I think Jenny has, I know she loves that. Um, and then the one that I've been listening to right now with a couple of our other diamond leaders is the, I can't even say this, the entrepreneurial <laughs> roller coaster. However you say that, entrepreneurial, entrepreneur, but girl at the end. <laughs> I can't say it. Anyways, you get the picture, the entrepreneurial roller, roller coaster. And it is all about just the ups and downs of working this type of business. So if you all were just ones that raised your hand and you're like, I feel like, a bipolar woman like one day I'm happy and the next day I'm like oh my gosh I can't believe I'm doing this like I have to quit and then the next day you're like yes I'm the best coach ever and then the next day you're like I'm totally quitting no one loves me so if you feel like that then you should read that book or listen to it on audible because it's just it's just it's the name of the game and it's just how it is in this kind of business but I am telling you that it is it is so worth the read so that's another great one um yeah, so that was my main little push there is you've got to be reading something or listening to something. If you work full time, that is not an excuse. I worked my entire business for eight and a half months before I was able to quit my job teaching and I was working the whole time and, and commuting three hours. So every day. <laughs> so you can listen in the car, you can pull up a YouTube video, you absolutely can make it happen. You just have to want to and you have to make it make it a point to do that. Um, okay, so next thing, other things that you guys know, but it just helps to kind of hear it again and just really get a game plan. And I've just been hearing a lot of needing the consistency and people trying to figure out kind of like their schedule and their game plan and like, you know, how do I know when to post and, and how do I make this work while I'm working full time or while you're not working full time, but you have kids and kids are crazy and there's no such thing as a schedule. <laughs> you know, I still have that problem now that I'm, I feel like I was more organized when I was teaching full time and barely had any time at all than I am now being a mom and not really having a good schedule with Hudson. So, um, but I will tell you, and if you listen, listen to the national wake up call, Melanie hits it right on the head with the main thing because people get so so overwhelmed with thinking that there's so many things that you need to do, but really the basis of making sure that your business is moving forward is doing those three vital behaviors that you are inviting people that you are constantly just commenting, liking, but it doesn't have to be a long time. If you're somebody who sits there and after you've given yourself, you know, 30 minutes or, or an hour to work and you literally finish and you're like, I don't think I did anything <laughs> in that hour or 30 minutes. And that means you are not being very, you're not being very cautious of what you're doing. So set a timer for yourself. For myself, I totally get distracted scrolling on Facebook or on Instagram if I don't set myself a timer. So get a little timer or use your phone and set it for like 10 minutes, just 10 minutes and scroll through Instagram and use that as your time to go and like different things, to search different hashtags and then be done with it. Don't, don't touch it again. Okay. And then do the same thing for Facebook when you're going through and you're commenting and liking and all that stuff. Otherwise, of course you could spend hours all day going to find people and things to like and things to post on. You could spend hours to doing that, but that's not, that's not why you're doing this. You didn't add this into your full-time job or you didn't make this your full-time job to be sitting there for hours doing nothing that's really productive at all. So, you know, this is to free up your time and for you to be, you know, doing something that you love, not it becoming like this humongous chore. So really set up a schedule for yourself. If you're working full time, then you listen to your personal development. Hi, I already fed him. Sorry, I already fed him. Puppy's home. <laughs> um, so if you are, um, I totally just lost my train of thought. What are we talking about again? Uh, oh, oh yeah, like your schedule and stuff. 
Okay, so that's my one tip is timers. Timers help so much with really being consistent. So if you have a, if you have a problem with that, I really encourage you to at least try it. At least try it for a week and see if that helps you at all. You really don't need to spend more than 10 or 15 minutes on social media doing the scrolling and the liking and, the, and the, all that kind of stuff. You don't need to. Then for post. So content is more important than posting like a million times a day. <laughs> okay. And there will be days where you're like, Oh my gosh, I have like so much to share about today. I just don't even know how I'm going to fit it all in. <laughs> and then there's other days where you're like, I'm just having a really crappy day and I have nothing that I want to post about. So that is when you start just taking pictures of everything, start taking pictures. And we talked about this on another call, but Storage is not, is not an excuse on your phone. Just because you don't have storage on your phone, that's why you're gonna make a Facebook group. You're gonna to go to groups and you're gonna make a new group and you're gonna add a friend or you're gonna add me in or something so that you can actually create it and you're gonna call it my post, okay? That's what you're gonna call it or whatever you wanna call it. Then you're gonna take me out of the group or take your spouse out of the group so it's just you. When you see a picture that you like, post it in there. When you take a picture of your food but you're not gonna post it that day, put it in there. If you think of something really clever, like a funny, like just status or anything like that, post it in there. So then on days where you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to scramble. I haven't posted since nine o'clock this morning and it's three o'clock and I feel like I need to get something else out there. Go to your group that you just made for yourself. your my post group and pull something from there and you can easily just post it in Facebook or on Instagram. Really, really simple doesn't take up storage on your phone and it helps you to be more consistent because you can plan out for the week and just have your posts in there um, so that you can easily pull from them. So I don't know if any of you guys have done that yet or not, but that's a really, really great idea and something that I do personally that helps me kind of just have a little library of things. So I take pictures of stuff all the time just in hopes that I could possibly use it or even if it's like a picture of my legs or something, <laughs> I could easily have that in there and then put it in word swag and put a cool quote over it and then it becomes like a masterpiece of a picture, not just a picture of my feet or something. So get creative like that and kind of make yourself a um, like a catalog of posts and things that you can use. And actually now that I'm getting into a year into coaching, what I have done is I have that time hop app and I've activated it. And what's really fun is that now a year, well over a year, but a year into it, I'm starting to see posts that I was making at the beginning of last year when I started coaching and I can start to recycle those too. I can use those pictures. I can use those words and things that I've done. So that's another great thing that you can do as well. Some of you who have been coaching for a while, or even if you're just starting get time hop or if there's other apps for that, I don't know, but time hop's the only one I know because it's fun. So in a year from now, you've got a whole catalog of things. You can start recycling things. People will not remember some posts that you made like 15 months ago, unless it was like just that good, but most people will not remember. So even if you just need the wording or something, recycle it. Don't, don't recreate the wheel every single time. Don't make it harder on yourself than it needs to be. Okay. So that is one thing about social media. And the main thing is just be there. Just post something just even if it's like only once or twice a day people notice when you go MIA so I know that it's hard I know like today I'm not feeling good I had a fever it would have been awesome to not have been anywhere near social media but people notice people notice when all of a sudden you're just non-existent and so if they've been watching you kind of thinking they're in their minds when people are waiting to sign up with you for a challenge group they're looking at you and and waiting to see if they can really trust you if they would want to be in your group if they can, you know, exactly. If they can trust you, if they, if they think that you're going to be, you know, someone who's going to hold them accountable and stuff. And if all of a sudden you've been sharing all this stuff and sharing about challenge groups, and then all of a sudden you go like MIA for two weeks, that's not going to make you seem very credible at all. So even though we all have rough days and things like that, I encourage you to share. I never was somebody who shared on social media about things. I never was super open about my life or anything like that. And and now I am, obviously, I share my entire life on social media, but you know, it's really encouraging when you have people who come to you and say, you know, I feel like I know you, I feel like, you know, I can relate to you because you've shared your story so much with me. And that is so, so huge. That is your goal. You want to share your life and you're not trying to sell things at people. You're trying to sell your lifestyle to them. Sell, sell your lifestyle by by just sharing what you do every day, you know, what coaching is getting, what coaching is doing for you, the people that you get to be in community with, the people that are in your challenge groups, even if you're working full time, that doesn't mean that this is like 
totally completely separate. You can talk about it being your side job or your hobby or something, but I know for a fact that if you're doing this then, and you're still here and you're still pushing at it, then there's some part of you that this is changing your life. It's making you a better person. It's making you more accountable. It's making you happier, you know, whatever it is or healthier. Maybe you're losing weight that you never could lose before, you know, whatever it is, I encourage you to share about that because that's what people want to know about. And that's the kind of thing that pulls at people's, you know, heartstrings when they're trying to, you know, get some encouragement and motivation and things like that. And you may be the person to kind of encourage them and inspire them. So that's something, you know, people ask me all the time, you know, like, how do you, how do you bring in challengers and how do you bring in coaches? And like, are you inviting like a million people a day? And no, like, I'm really not. I would say maybe like 85% of my business is really just selling my lifestyle. I share my life. I share exactly what I'm doing. I share different tips and things that work for me. I share about you guys, about my coaches, and about how I love my team and how, you know, you guys have changed my life, all that kind of stuff. And then maybe like the other 10 or 15% of the time, I'm actually sending out cold invite saying, Hey, I think that you'd be great. I would love for you to join me besides like talking to girls that have been in my challenge groups who are so inspiring. And I'm like, I have to have you on my team because you are just so inspiring. But other than that, I mean, sharing your lifestyle is really what gets people super inspired. So when you think about your days, when you think about days where you're feeling really crappy and you would love to not share anything, I encourage you to like step back for a minute and think about something that you could share with people because being being um, visible and being present and being consistent is like 100% important in this business. So that's my other little plug to you about that. Um, what else? Um, we talk about challenge groups. Everyone's kind of doing different things. You know, every month I encourage you to still remember to host some kind of free group and some kind of paid group, whether it's a challenge with inside your fit club, or if you're a new coach, don't worry about all this. We'll be talking about this. Um, but free groups don't stop doing those, even though they're kind of petty and it's like, Oh my gosh, they kind of take a lot of work and stuff. They really are awesome to kind of get some people going with you and get them to see you as a coach and see kind of what you're like, see how you encourage them and motivate them and, and that kind of thing. And they just get, they get to know you, especially when you do little welcome videos and you share in your groups and stuff that lets people know who you are and get, get more of a sense of who you are. So um, and online with that videos are huge on Facebook right now. So if you're not afraid to do like little videos or to post your workouts or even like, like Laura did an awesome little video last night after one of her posts got, you know, a bunch of likes and stuff. She just let everyone know more about her. She let everybody see her personality, see her true heart. And that is awesome. That is so, so huge. So if you can just put yourself out there, like for challenge group invites or things like that, you'll see I've started to do some more videos and things. That's awesome. So I encourage you to do things that you are uncomfortable to do, because if you're uncomfortable doing it, then that is good. That means that you are growing and that you are progressing in this business because you're constantly trying something new to put yourself out there. That's huge. If you get to a point where it's just too easy and too simple and stuff, then you need to try something new to challenge yourself again. Okay. Um, what else? Other ideas people have, I've been asked getting this question a lot. Like, I don't know what to share when we talk about posting since our main, you know, thing that we do is, is social media and sharing and stuff. So get creative. Okay. This is one of the trainings that I did for the new coaches training. Um, the new, like the revamped one that Micah just posted in our group on just like things that you can share, how to kind of like infuse coaching. So for me, I, you know, I started coaching when I was working full time and I could not let my school know that I was planning on leaving. <laughs> and so like many of you, you guys have full-time jobs where maybe if it is your goal to leave, you haven't let them know that, or you can't let them know that. So you have to be kind of discreet in how you share about things. And so the way that I approached coaching and sharing about it was from the point of, of you guys, of coaches, of my team, and kind of like how it was making me, you know, a better person and how personal development was inspiring me to do this. And my challengers are awesome and they're inspiring me to do this. And so sharing different things like that, not like, oh my gosh, I hate my job. I cannot wait to make coaching my full-time job. Don't share stuff like that. That's not, I didn't share anything like that. That's not how, that's not how I like got where I am. You know, you share about, just share about what it's doing for you personally. So coaching is so much more than just 
fitness and nutrition and things like that, you know, when you're actually part of a team, there's so much more that infuses into your life. So I encourage you to share about that. Share on Tuesdays. Get yourself a schedule. Tuesdays, share a transformation post, whether it's you, whether it's somebody else. If you don't have anything like that, then get creative. Share some comments from your challenge group. I'm sure you've had a challenger reach out to you and say, thank you so much for reaching out to me because I... I feel 100% better or, you know, I've lost this many pounds or I love this group or whatever the comments are. That's awesome. Share about that. That's a good thing you can share. Something different that you can share on Transformation Tuesday. Do something funny. If you're kind of like a funny person and that's your personality, Laura does a great job of like sharing her dogs or, you know, somebody else said a Transformation Tuesday post some other time too about like their baby or about some other kind of pet or something. I don't know who it was, but... Those are all great ideas too. It doesn't have to be the typical like this person was huge and now they're really skinny. You know, no, you you do other stuff, do other things. So you can be creative with that. You kind of just have to think outside of the box. Um, share different tips. When I was working full time, I'm like, okay, I can't be posting all the time because people have to know I'm at work. <laughs> and so I would share different things. I would share something in the morning, either a motivational post or a quote or something, or my Shakeology, but not just a picture of my Shakeology. I would share why I loved it. Share, you'll see a lot of some of the girls who've been coaching with me for a little bit longer, sharing the different ingredients on the side of their picture and sharing about what those different ingredients mean to them or different things. Why is Shakeology awesome? Don't just say, I'm drinking my Shakeology. People don't know what that is. <laughs> so share what, what it does for you. Share that it's making your hair, nails, and skin you know, stronger or better, or it's helped you to lose weight or, you know, whatever it is, but share some, some little, you know, silver lining about it, about why, why you love it so much. Don't just say that, you know, I'm drinking my Shakeology because the people who maybe are just starting to follow you, they're not going to know what that is. Um, so that's kind of things that I would do in the morning In the afternoon, if I had a chance, I'd post my lunch or something like that, give them a recipe, but on my way home on my commute, it's so easy to post a selfie when you're in traffic at like five or 6 PM. So post a selfie of you with an apple and give some kind of, some kind of fact about how good an apple is for you a day or post, you know, your carrots and celery and hummus and share your favorite hummus or, you know, whatever it is, but share something that people could be, could get use out of, share something that people could find value in. Um, what are some other things? Throwback Thursday is another one you, a lot of you guys do. Flex Friday, you know, so those of you who are really struggling with like, I don't know what to post every single day, get into a groove. I don't think Brooks is on this call, but she does like a taco Thursday or Tuesday or something like that. Get creative. Do something fun that you can do every single week that like makes you different, makes you unique. Think about things like that because that's, that's the kind of thing that sets you apart and that people are like, oh my gosh, I really want to go see what Jenny's up to tonight because I forgot it's Taco Thursday and I bet you she posted something, you know, or whatever it may be. That's something that people look forward to when they start really starting to follow you and they see you sharing consistently. They start to feel like they're a part of your life. So when they sign up with you eventually, they're like, I feel like I know you. I'm so excited to join your team or I'm so excited to join your challenge group or whatever it is. So just some ideas of different things that you can be be sharing consistently. And of course, I'll always give you ideas if you need more, but those are all different things. Be thinking about useful things, put it through that. So what filter, if you just posted something and someone goes, okay, so what, <laughs> like, why does that even matter? Then you probably should take it down. If it doesn't matter, if it's just like, you just word vomiting stuff that means like makes no sense or just doesn't even matter. Don't post it. <laughs> you want to like have valuable things that you're posting, whether it's about your life or about your challengers or your group or your team or things like that tips. So kind of put it through that filter, you know, if you're not, if you're posting about something that just really doesn't matter, then maybe, maybe don't post that. Or maybe just, you know, post that to some, some friends or something like that, or in one of your groups. Um, okay. What else is important? And then I'll let you, I want to let you guys ask questions. The other thing, oh yeah, the last thing is success club. So if you're a new coach, you're going to learn about this in your coach basics and you will be talking next week on our call. If you're in a coach within the last two weeks. Um, but success club is huge success club. I, since the very first month that I have become a coach, I made it my goal to hit success club 10 every single month without doubt. And I have for 15 months now. And I will tell you, I truly believe that that is like the one thing that has continued to just keep me going because you know what? That means that every month I'm at least helping how many people is that five, six, five, no, five, six, 
that's five people, right? Five, yeah. So <laughs> I can't count on my head. Um, so that means that you're helping five people a month, whether it's new coaches or new challengers or something like that. That's new people that you're bringing on with you. If it's a challenger, they could potentially be a coach. If it's a coach, then they could potentially be bringing on their own coach. That is just a really, really good measurement to let yourself know that you are helping other people and that you are continuing to put skin in the game and keep helping and expanding our entire team, our entire network. And the bonus is if you're a new coach and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have Shakeology coming every single month, like how can I afford this? Help three people and it's paid for. So that's huge. If you can just help three people a month, then your Shakeology is completely paid for and then it's like you're coaching for free and then you're just profiting and making a little bit extra money for your family. And then the other good thing is also if you're a newer coach within your first month or so, then you get to go to trips and things like that for free. So if you're still in your first month, you know, if you sign up in December, like December 21st, either by the end of December or by the full end of January, if you get Success Club for three consecutive months, then you get your free ticket to Summit, which you know is like that huge Beachbody conference, which is amazing. It is like the most life-changing thing ever. Lauren, Laura was there with me. Jenny was there. Um, I don't see anyone else on this call that was with me last time, but it is amazing. It's like you get to meet all of the trainers, all of the top 10 people, all of the CEOs. Um, some of us leaders get to bring some of you guys with us to big cool parties and it's just awesome. So you want to make it a goal to hit success club in the first couple months of your business so that you can go and about like half of our team already has their ticket set and ready to go for next year, which is going to be awesome. So um, yeah, if you don't understand what Success Club is or you need help with that, then message me right now aside and I will help you with that later tonight or on our new coaches call next week. So that's just a really, really good goal for you to have. Um, whether it's Success Club 5 or Success Club 10, um, that just really helps you to kind of measure your, your growth as a coach, just making sure that you're continuing, continuing to help people every single month, which is why you're here in the first place. So, um, Okay, I think that's it for me. That was a lot of information. But does anyone have anything for me? I want to questions or comments or anything. The floor is yours. So ask away. I guess I have a quick question. Uh -huh. Probably not quick. But um, so Success Club, like I'm, I haven't hit it since my first month of as a coach, and it's driving me crazy. I, and I'm trying to figure out what more I can be doing to kind of get there because I, I want it and I'm trying to make it non-negotiable, but I can only do so much to get there. Like mm -hmm. I'm really working on expanding and growing to have more people that I'm sharing with. And I actually have, I've like, I've shared a recipe on a like vegan page yesterday and I've filled up my power threes for the week. I'm not going to stop, but I pretty much, I've added that many people and messaged that many people each individually, not like a spam thing so that I'm connecting with each of them. So that's going to help, obviously, but I don't know if there's anything else I can be doing actively to really push it and really get there. That definitely that um, expanding your network is huge. So your vital behaviors, remember, one of them is inviting people. So are you actually inviting them to join you or are you just adding them to your network? I'm, I don't add anybody without messaging them uh, to exactly. make the connection. And uh, so like, just like, just making the connection, like just the conversation, are you actually saying like, Hey, I don't know if you'd be interested, but this month I'm hosting a challenge group and all it is, is like a bunch of us getting together. We're working out, we're posting sweaty selfies and we're holding each other accountable. I don't know if that's anything you're into, but would you want to join me? Have you ever sent anything like that? I have. Okay. Not, not as often as I should directly. Cause I, I'm kind of like skip around it, but I need to get more comfortable with directing it. But it, with the people that I have now, I, I know they won't be like they're old friends of mine and whatnot. Okay. So it's more getting out of that warm market where I, I've kind of worn it out. But I was just going to say that. So like, I, um, it's funny because everyone always talks about being more comfortable in their warm market, you know, like their friends and their family and everything like that. I've like literally never had anybody sign up that was in my family or really, I mean, Marla is one of my good friends from church, but like, aside from that, there's not really many people that I'm like good friends with that have ever signed up with me. So like, I've never been like a warm market person. I'm always like on Instagram with a bunch of people that I don't know. So that is definitely huge. You know, joining different groups that you have that you don't know anything about that you don't know anybody. in. that's huge. 
Instagram, finding a bunch of random hashtags that like semi relate to you and being consistent and posting those with every single post that you make. That is huge. And then you just got to start inviting them no matter what. The more no's that you get, send out 10 more invites. The more no's that you get, triple that. For me, like my power threes, I don't just invite like three people or I don't invite just like add two people to my network. I mean, I like triple, quadruple that. Like I do a lot more than just the baseline. And so, and that's kind of what you have to do if you really, really want to get after that. If you really, really want to start seeing those people turn over. And I will tell you that, you know, there were months and months where I would feel like the same way where I'm like, ugh, I don't feel like very many people are getting interested. But then all of a sudden, every month I would see some people trickle back in that were people that I talked to months ago that I had really been planting that seed with and really been you know, touching base within that kind of thing. Um, so I just encourage you, yeah, keep expanding your network, keep inviting. Don't be afraid to say something like that. You know, if you and I were talking and, or if, if, yeah, if you and I were talking and you were to send me something that just said, Hey, you know, you, we've been talking for a couple days now or just, you know, all day or something like that. And I got a message from somebody saying, Hey, I don't know if you're interested, but I actually host these accountability groups and they're really fun. You know, we all get together and we work out and we drink this awesome shake and, you know, we post sweaty selfies and I share different recipes with you guys. And it's just really fun. I don't know if you're into that kind of thing, but I would love to tell you more about it if you would be interested. Something like that, like I would never be put off by somebody inviting me to do something like that. I would rather that than them just put me in a group that I haven't asked to be a part of, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the most frustrating thing to me. So that's just something that you get more comfortable with too. But definitely sending invites and things like that is, is something that's going to really start turning over those people, even if they say no, because then eventually when they get to a point where they're like, oh. I really want to lose some weight or I really want to do this. They're like, Oh, Celia runs those groups. Let me go check in with her again. And that's kind of how it just starts the whole ball rolling. Cool. Yeah. yeah. What else? Questions, concerns? <laughs> Nothing. You guys are all pros. You got no, no problems. <laughs> yeah. Hey Jordan. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Um, so I just listened to a little bit of Micah's call and she talked about, um, like business success partners. Do you want that to be someone who's significantly a further on or someone who's kind of at the same, like joined when you are and you're working together? That's a great question. I totally had that written in my head that I forgot because of my mom brain, but I was going to touch on that. Okay. So success partners are huge and you may have been working the business for like months now and still don't have a success partner. And that's okay, but we're going to change that <laughs> because it's really, really helpful. Now, so a success partner should be somebody essentially that is kind of around the same point as you. Yes, obviously that can change. So let me tell you my backstory. My success partner and I, we started together. We both were teachers. We both were like, we got together and had like a little mini date over a Zoom call like this. And because somebody up above us told us, hey, we think that you guys would be great together. You should just, you know, like have a little date and see what, how you connect. So she and I had a Zoom date and we chatted. She had a little girl already and I, we were hoping to be expecting that year. We both were teachers. We both were like, well, we're not going back to school next year. And so let's make this happen. So we talked and we really connected. And so we decided that we were going to be partners. Okay, so she and I both, we quit teaching at the same time. We both had this same goal in mind. We both were like, okay, we are ready to make this business happen. And by summertime, we're not going back to our job and we want to be making close to a full-time income. And so that was our, that was our goal. And we both had a really similar goal in mind. So that's why we chose to work together. Now, as time has gone on, my team has progressed a little bit faster than hers. So we're kind of on different pages now, you know, as far as our rank and that kind of thing, but because we're so close and because we've invested so much time together, it still works well. We both still have teams. We both are still able to kind of stay on the same track. We just have, she has a smaller range of people to manage as I have a much bigger range of people to manage. Um, but it definitely does help if you're on the same page because if you're starting off with someone who's say a five-star diamond and you're an emerald there's a big gap there because they're gonna have a lot more leadership responsibilities than you may have and your goal is simply just to get to emerald um, or maybe you're just a coach and you want to get to emerald, you know wherever your situation is so it definitely helps to be a little bit more on the same page and then you also want to think about um, you know, obviously your personality is clicking. If you're someone who's really, really uptight and like a control freak and you're with somebody who's like slobby Molly over here and she just doesn't care what she does and she's like, just slap it on there and that'll be fine. 
then that's probably not going to work really well for you. You're probably going to get really frustrated if you're the more uptight, perfectionistic one. So you want to try to find somebody who has a similar self. Marla, you're laughing. <laughs> it's always the names. They get me. Oh, I I'm really I'm sorry. Good at, like really quick, really good, ridiculous names. Um, so, but back to that. So like your style and stuff matters too, because, you know, obviously everyone has different styles and some people just everything looks different in our, you know, our main thing that we do is social media. We make posts, we make um, little promotional flyers and things like that. So you want to be working with somebody who you kind of click with and who you have a similar style to that. If you were to delegate some roles, if Marla and I were working together and I was to be like, Hey, can you create this graphic and I'll do this? I would totally be able to trust her because I know that her style is similar to mine. So that makes sense kind of so that you kind of feel like, okay, like everything, like we're good. We're on the same page. We kind of know what we want it to look like. So those are some things to keep in mind. You, I encourage you to stay within our team for one within my team is what I usually do because usually we all have a similar way of doing things. We all kind of know I'm like the leader of our team and you guys know, you guys all have all been doing the similar thing. What we do in the inspiration crew might be different than people do in another team or, you know, but if you were to go within like the whole of um, team inspiration, I would think that you would be fine because we all kind of, you know, trickle down from Micah and kind of take her leadership. So um, that's something that I, I suggest to kind of stay within our team. If you were to go to like, you know, want somebody off of Lindsay Matway's team or something, we're going to do things much differently than their team does. And so that might cause a little bit of like a, a learning curve and kind of just stress you out even more <laughs> because it's like, okay, they might do something totally different than we do. So I do encourage you to stay within the team as much as possible. Um, but yeah, and just know that, you know, success partners can change. You know, sometimes people just, maybe they just drift apart or they kind of realize that maybe we weren't clicking as much and there should be no hard feelings. It should just be like a, Hey, let's reevaluate. I think you're here and I'm here. And I think we just have like a little bit of a disconnect. So maybe we should kind of like either go our own ways or maybe, you know, as you start going up higher in rank, sometimes people have to, you know, devote more to their team. If you've got a lot of coaches underneath you, then sometimes a lot of your focus goes to that and you kind of forget about your success partner, which, you know, is not a bad thing, but it's just kind of what happens as you, as you progress in your business. So it's always okay to kind of reevaluate and say, okay, can we like talk about this? I feel like maybe we're on, on the wrong page. You know, what do you think? Should we kind of find new people or do we want to try to make this work? And so that happens all the time. There's people looking for success funders that I've been doing and that are in our leader page, our five star and above that are like, okay, I need to reevaluate. Like my success partner are not working and they've been doing the business for like four years and all of a sudden they're getting a new success partner. So there's no like right or wrong way to go about it. And there is a group, um, those of you who are new coaches and our new coach team page, the link to the success partner group is actually in there where you can go and like make your little dating profile <laughs> um, and kind of talk about yourself and your goals and stuff and, and all within the mindset of, of finding a success partner. So that's something that you should definitely do. That's in our new coach page. Does that answer your question, Jordan? Kind of? Yeah, it does. Thanks. Okay, cool. Does anyone have questions about that, about success partners and stuff? Or if you need help finding one, then message me aside because I can kind of, you know, since I talk to most of you, I kind of know where you're all at as far as your rank and kind of what your goals are for this year. You know, if you're somebody who is fine, they just want to become an Emerald coach and that's, you just want to kind of work it as a hobby. I'm probably not going to suggest that you work with somebody who's like, I'm going to be a two-star premier coach at the end of the year. I'm probably not going to put you with somebody because you're going to have a different push goals. So, um, but if you want to message me aside, then I'm happy to kind of give you some ideas of people that you could possibly ask and see if they have a success partner, because that might be a good option for you. Any other questions about that or just anything else in general? Nothing. Okay, you guys are quiet. I'm sure I'll get like floods. I already see like messages popping up on the side. So if you're too shy to ask here, that's fine. <laughs> I'll, um, I will answer aside. But, um, oh, Elizabeth, hold on one second. I'm seeing you pop up here. Hold on. Um, what are you looking for? Talk, um, yeah, yes, Team Z will let you work the biz for the last few months. Ooh, Lauren. Okay. Good questions. Hold on. Sorry guys. I didn't even see these. Okay. Elizabeth, 
Yes, TMZ does send, or Lauren, whoever asked this, <laughs> it does send messages out. You can connect your social media sites to it. It might just be email though, and I, it might not be Facebook Messenger. I'm not positive. Um, I have not had time to like devote more than like 20 minutes of my time at a time since my little boy is not sleeping. Um, so yes, but I do know that it connects your email and that kind of thing just for you to be able to send it in. I don't think it comes back to you. I think you just can send out from there. Does that make sense? I see you shaking your head. And then um, Laura McClintock, I don't see you on here, but you're asking questions. I don't know where you are. <laughs> but um, yes, if you're so yeah, that's another thing. Success printers, if they have not been working the business or maybe they've kind of slacked off, then I would touch base with them, say, hey dude, what's up? Like I thought we were success printers. If they're like, eh, I'm not really working it right now, whatever, and then just say, hey, I hope you don't mind, but I really, you know, I really have a goal in mind for this year. Would you mind if I find somebody else to kind of really, you know, team up with to host some of my challenges with? Most likely they're going to be like, yeah, totally, sure. So I would just, you know, you want to do, ultimately you want to do what's best for you. If this is like, you're treating it like a business, then it's okay to get kind of petty about things like that and be like, I need to be with somebody who encourages me and who challenges me and who is going to make me a better coach. Because if you're somebody who's holding you back, then that doesn't feel really good. <laughs> so um, it's okay to be like specific about that kind of thing because it's your business. It's your job. If this is, if you're trying to get out of your current job, then it's even more um, important to you. So don't ever feel bad about that. Um, I'm seeing all kinds of other questions. Is that, is that all the questions that were asked in there, I think? Does anyone have anything else? Any other ones? Ashley, do you send cold invites after you're talking? Are you talking about, shake your head for me, are you talking about on Teensy or just like anytime? Anytime? Your poor thing, you can't talk. <laughs> oh, in general. Um, yeah, well, my cold invites is like what I said. Like, I try to make it really personal, like how I would be talking to them. I'm never like, hey, join my challenge group. It's going to be awesome. I never say anything like that. It's always like, hey, like, I'm thinking about you. I, you know, we talked last week and I was just thinking about you. And so I thought I'd invite you to my next challenge group. You know, it's just a place where, like I said before, where, you know, just make it sound fun, where we're going to, you know, hang out and post funny selfies and work out. And I'm going to give you some recipes and things. And I don't know if you'd be interested, but. I'd love to tell you more about it if you, you know, if you think that you want to know more about it. Something really, really um, just easy and, and just low-key like that. Um, I'm getting a lot of people who say no to shake all the value funny info about it. Do you run into that a lot? If so, how do you handle that? Okay, yes. And that is something that, so the question was, do you run into people not wanting Shakeology, that kind of thing? And yes, I do. And I did more so at the beginning of my coaching career. And I would say pretty much up till about like, even like nine or 10 months, I would still get people that are like, eh, I'm going to hold off on Shakeology. Like I'd rather spend more money and get something else without Shakeology. I don't get it. But some people will do things like that. And so I always offer packets, you know, if you have a spouse or a family member signed up, then get your Shakeology and packets so that you can always give those out as samples to people. You can sell them, make back some money on them. Great way to give value to it because people get to try it. A lot of people, you know, excuse me, and myself included, I don't know if I would, you know, unless somebody had really added value to it, I probably would have been hesitant too because of the money. But if somebody was willing to give me a couple samples to try and I was to like see how awesome it was, then I would totally be hooked and be ready to go. So if you can kind of go around it by giving them samples and things like that. And what I have found is that, you know, so I would say the first like eight to nine months of my business, I was still running into that a lot. Now, I very rarely have that question because I've added so much value to Shakeology over my months <laughs> of sharing about it, whether it's a recipe, whether it's sharing in different ingredients and things that I like, whether it's like, oh, like, you know, a headache cure or a, you know, lady problem cure where you don't have cramps because it helps you or, you know, whatever it is. But over the course of time of sharing things like that, you'll start seeing people that just don't even ask a question. You're like, they're like, what's the price? And you tell them the price and this is what includes it. And they're like, okay, and they sign up. So I definitely, that just adding value to everything that you're doing, really sharing, being a product of the product, sharing your workout, sharing your Shakeology and adding value to everything that you do. Not just like posting a picture of it. Don't post a picture of you in Shakeology every single day, but every couple of days, share something about it, something different. You don't see me holding my cup every single day. Sometimes it's like on the desk. Sometimes it's like, you know, I'm outside or I'm in the car, whatever it may be, mix it up and then share something different about it and really, really add value to it. 
and just be patient with things like that. You know, you can, some people are just going to say no, no matter how much you share about it, no matter how many awesome things that you share about it to them, they're still going to say no. And those people might come back later and they might not. And that's when you just move on. So, but definitely adding value to it over the course of time helps a lot, helps a lot, a lot. Anything else? I have a question. Yes. Where are you? Um, okay. You said that every time someone likes your fit page, you send them a message, right? Yes. Okay. I've been doing that and I noticed that in my, um, like in my outbox or whatever, not a single message has been read. So I'm not sure. I, th I feel like it's going to like their other folder and I don't know how to avoid it. It might, and I, and I do have some like that where I'm like, okay, never mind. Like, obviously they're not going to see it or they might come back and be like, I'm sorry, I never responded or whatever, but I still continue to send them. Cause you'll get just a few out of the handful if, even if, but yeah, I mean, they do send to their mailbox, but it might go to their other, if that's kind of how their account is set up. So, but I just continue to send them and, um, you know, and as if they're definitely following your, cause they're following your page, if they've liked it. So just keep, you know, sharing things, make sure you always post your, your, um, what's it called? Your call to actions and things like that. Make sure you always post those on there so that if they are following your page, they'll see them and then they might go to their mailbox to send you something and then see that message. Okay. I just didn't know if it was just my account or if it did it with everybody. So no, okay. it does Shannon, it does I think Laura's chatting about this right now, but are it. you friends with these people? Um, some of them I'll friend and then like, as the, if they like my page, I'll friend them and then I'll send them a message. But all, still all of them are going to their other folder. So yeah, you almost want to wait until they accept your friend request I was just right. and then they won't go to that folder. Apparently you can pay like $1 to have it not go to that folder, but that's, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> so if you wait, <laughs> if you wait until they accept and then like, if it's been a couple, you know, days or whatever, and they don't accept, then just send it. I mean, I've had people respond from the other folder, but it's, it's rare. Okay. So if you're friends okay. with them, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I am. Um, I was going to say that too. I always friend them first. That was my next question to you, Shannon. But I always friend them too. And then, you know, you'll still have people who won't ever friend you and I'll still send them a message and sometimes they'll see it and sometimes they won't. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank that's you. A, that's a really great way to expand your network though. If you guys have a fit page and I will tell you, I have grown, let me see it. I have started boosting my page, not a post, but just the page itself. And I, I have not been building it like at all for a long time. And, um, and I had, you know, maybe like four or 500 people that liked it. And so I started like, again, sharing just what I share on Facebook and Instagram. I share it to that page and I started to boost my page and I boost it with a, a with a video of me and it was me and Hudson, my little one that I have done. Let me show you. Can you guys see this? So, oh wait, it's this video that I have. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's like when it's on the promotional page, and you guys might even see it when you're scrolling in your newsfeed. But it's posted like this, and it's the video, and it just has like my little tagline right there. And so I've had that boosted for a week now, and I have gone up in 694 likes. So I encourage you to run a boost on your page, even if you can only do it for like a week, or if you can only budget to do like. $10 a month or something like that. I really do encourage you to boost your page for like a week or two. If you have one, don't, if you don't have one, don't worry about that right now. Don't, don't stress yourself out with that. Focus on Facebook and Instagram. But if you have a page, that's a really great thing that you guys can do to build, to build your network. And we can have a chat about that aside if you need help with kind of knowing how to do an ad and that kind of thing. But um, boosting a page versus just a, a, a post is huge. And if you can do it with a video, that's awesome. So like moms, something with your kids, um, you know, teachers, like a fun hit workout, something quick, all of you that work, something, a quick workout that people can see you doing. Um, that's a great way to add people. And so then anyone who likes my page, I go and I send them that message and I friend them and then I send them a message and just say, Hey, thanks for liking my page. You know, I hope you find yourself inspired here with fun posts and blah, 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 blah. And in that message, I actually say, um, all right, here, let me just show you because I have it. Um, but I actually like go ahead and invite them on my fit page because I take that as my like, okay, so they must be, you know, they like my, they like my stuff and they're liking my fit page. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share this with them. So let me show you 
here is the, let me screen share really quick. Um, this is what I share with them. Can you guys see that? So I say, hi, thanks for the new like on my fan page. Welcome, you know, I tell them my this, blah, 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 blah. Please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. And I've posted this in our team page too. And then I go ahead and I invite them because they're already liking my fit page. So they must be into health and fitness or want some kind of inspiration. So I go ahead and I share that with them and I invite them to join. And I've had like, I've actually gotten a few challenge pack sales out of that people who are interested who talk about stuff, share their goals with me, and then people who never respond, and then all of a sudden they see different posts about me inviting to challenge groups, and then they message me aside and are like, hey, I'm so glad I found your page last week. I'd love to hear more about the hammer and chisel workout or you know whatever it is. So that's another great way to kind of build your network too, if you have a fit page. I don't even know what the original question was to that, but hopefully that helps whoever it was that asked that question. <laughs> oh, Shannon, I think it was you. I have a totally unrelated question. Yes. But that's cool if you were, if you were done. Um, I have tried downloading VidLab so I could get those other types of videos. I don't know what it is. Maybe some of you are better at apps than me, but it will not work for anything. It'll just shut itself off. I've tried re-downloading it, updating. Nothing works. Has anybody else had that problem? Has anyone had that problem with VidLab? It's an iPhone, yeah. It is an iPhone. I've just been using pick play post for now and I might just keep doing that, but I just like the other app. It looks so much cleaner than pick play post. So yeah. do you know what operating system you're on? What was that? Do you know what I have? An iPhone. System? Is it oh, up to me? I haven't updated in a while, so that could be part of it, but yeah. I just haven't had, I haven't had issues with any other apps that I've downloaded here recently. So I thought that was kind of weird. That's the only thing I can really think of. Yeah, I was going to say update it, and then also a lot of us have been using iMovie, which is really awesome. It's super, it's like not super easy because you have to kind of like figure it out at first, but then there's like, there's not a bunch of options, so it makes it easier in that sense. Like, it's like all you can do is add text right at the very beginning. Like, you guys have seen all of, here, I'll just try to screen share a video for y'all, um, but doing videos like that has been way easier <laughs> for me because it looks a lot cleaner. Um, in my personal opinion. And so it's just, I really liked doing, doing um, iMovie ones. And I know Jenny's been doing quite a few of those. Um, I don't know who yeah, else. I've been liking y'all's lately. They look really clean and professional. Yeah. And it's, you do have to do, okay, here, let me screen share now. Um, let me see if it'll do it. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Now? Yeah. Um, like this one is one of them. And so like you only have the option to like add text right at the very beginning, which is nice. It's really quick. You can, there's music in there that you can use. Um, don't put anything that's like a popular song cause you'll get it taken down. And I've been like booted out of Facebook like five times in the last like two weeks. And I always like respond. I'm always like, I promise I can post this. And I like re asked to be reinstated, but, um, <laughs> So this is, but this is iMovie. And if you do go to make, Jenny, I don't know if you have to do this, but do you turn your, you turn your phone like this way, like landscape wise, right? When you do yours. I don't know where you are. Are you in there? Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have to, but if I, do, if I do it, um, vertical, then the black, like, yeah. So if you do it up and down, it'll so like, landscape is way better. Yeah, do it landscape. That's how I do it on here. So like I just like pop my phone up and I do it this way. Because if you do it this way, then it'll cut off different parts of your body and stuff if you're not far enough away, which I'm never far enough away in my room. So, um, but yeah, iMovie. There's an app and you can use it on the computer. Definitely good, good investment um, for sure because it's really easy to use in the sense that there's not a lot of transitional type things that you have to do and I like that you can edit it really easily and they like you can split the different frames and all that kind of stuff and make it you know make it really quickly so play around with that that's a great video one and definitely one that looks very professional which is good you want to start we talked about that at our end of the year call just making everything look much more professional your profile your you know your profile picture your cover photo all that kind of stuff making it look really nice and neat really sets you apart from other people are you doing the editing for iMovie on your phone or on your desktop? Phone. Okay. Yeah. The app, the app I saw is like, it's like 250 for the iPhone or something like that. You have to pay for it. Yeah, you do. But I use it so much that to me, it's like, it's worth it. <laughs> okay, cool. 
So I have my few like five or six apps that I've paid for that I use all the time. And to me, it's just worth it because they're easy. Okay. So you guys do your videos on your phone? Because yeah. I feel like every time I try to do it, I'm either, yeah, like you said, I'm either cut off or I have to go so far away that I guess I don't know where to place it or <laughs> I've tried a couple times and it just doesn't work out. So I'm like, forget it. And I get frustrated. <laughs> Okay, so a couple things that I do. One, I do have a tripod that I actually bought from Amazon, but I never use it, but it really, it, I used to use it, and I just can't find it from when we moved, but mm -hmm. Annie has one, yeah. It's the exact same one as hers, and you, like, just, like, pull the little thing, and you can, like, make it really tall. You can, like, tilt your camera down, so, like, uh -huh. I have, like, a big, like, um, shelf in here, so mm -hmm. even, like, with my phone, I'm so retarded, so, like, I'll, like, have my phone, and I'll, like, have it like tilted forward and then like have my cup in front of it. So like it'll hold it like tilted forward and then I can like have it up higher, but then it like looks like it's looking down. I mean, you can just, <laughs> just kind of figure out. <laughs> Even sometimes just taking pictures. I'm like trying to set it up and then I'm like hitting the timer and then it falls over and I'm just like, 10 oh minutes later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to throw my phone. Yeah, no, it's so funny because I'll like, my husband will like walk into different places and like in my office, I'll have like 17 books like stacked high and like a cup in the sun. It's like, I'm like, that's where my phone sits. Like, you know, and like it'll sit like perfectly. So you just kind of figure out what works for you. Or if you okay. want to the money, go pay like $10 and get yourself a little tripod because it's yeah. so <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. So I thought maybe you guys were reading it from a laptop or something because it always seems so perfect and angled right and like well, lighting does a lot too you can use your laptop and prop your phone up like against the screen and then like move the screen down and up and that helps too i have done that for like videos and things like that i do that a lot okay i will have to Just some tips you know on how to take <laughs> i know because i love all your videos and i feel like i should do some but i just haven't quite figured it out yet <laughs> yeah you just kind of figure out what makes it work. And if you guys were all to see behind the scenes of everybody else, we always laugh because we're like, got books piled high and like, well, well, my thing is too, like, I'll do the workout and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do these moves and then I'll like redo them. Yep. Because <laughs> I don't have the space on my phone to like record my whole workout or anything. Yeah, yeah. I'll do like five seconds. That is hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Yep. Yeah. I'll do the same thing. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Anybody else? Am I still sharing or is the screen or can you just see me? You can just see me, right? Um, okay. Anything else? Any other questions before I let you guys go and hang out with your families? Nothing? Awesome. Okay. Well, hold on. We got to take a team selfie. So hold on a second. So then you can share about it because sharing about coaching and all of your posts somehow discreetly not being like, I'm a coach and I love it, but like being just, just squeezing it in there. Like, what do I get to do on Wednesday nights? I get to sit and, you know, hang out with my friends or whatever you're going to say, but everyone's primping right now. Y'all are hilarious. Everyone's going, everyone's fixing their hair. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right. On the count of three, one, two, three. Okay. Awesome. All right. I will post this in our team page and then, um, that's it. So if you need me message me, remember that next week I will be out of town, but I'll still be present, but I might not get back to you as fast as I normally do, but please feel free to ask questions and call me or whatever, which you guys have been doing a really great job of doing. So I will talk to you later. Bye guys.